All right, so this is our first day looking at understanding poetry. And so our objective today is readers understand how to read the line breaks and white space of a poem. So poems are not necessarily read in the same way that a normal text would be read. So when you're reading a book, you've got paragraphs, sentences, chapters, right? Typically that's how it's set up. And the way that you read those is you would go to a period, right? And you would pause briefly and continue on. And then typically at the end of a paragraph, you pause briefly before going to the next one. Poems do not operate that way. Poems operate in a different way. So we're going to look at how the structure of a poem looks. So line breaks and white space. What is a line break and what is white space? So what do you think? Before I give you the answer, what do you think a line break and white space might be? Micah? So a big section of just white, okay, would be the white space, and a line break would be a space. Okay. Anybody else have any other thoughts? No other thoughts, huh? That's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a poem first. This poem is called Oak After Dark by Joyce Sidman. As nightmare or as nighttime rustles at my knee, I stand in silent gravity and quietly continue chorus, chores, not chorus, of feeding leaves and stealing toys. While beetles whisper in my bark, while warblers roost in branches dark, I stretch my roots into the hill and slowly, slowly drink my fill. A thousand crickets scream my name, yet I remain the same, the same. I do not rest, I do not sleep, and all my promises I keep. To stand while all the seasons fly, to anchor earth, to touch the sky. So, when I read that, did I pause at periods? What do you think? Sort of, right? I sort of paused at periods. But did I pause at other times too? Yeah. yeah, what other times did I pause? Briefly pause, of course, not like long pauses, but a brief pause. London? Okay, so like when I go from here to here, yeah, so I would pause here, a brief pause, anywhere else, or is that more or less when I pause? Am Amelia? Because, um, in between, like, yep, so like in between here and here, right? Yep, that would be one of the pauses. So let's go ahead and I asked the first question, obviously. How did I know when to pause? How would I read these sentences differently if this were a paragraph instead of a poem? So if I was looking at this, and I was going to read it like a normal text, like, like your chapter book or something like that, how would I read that differently, Wesley? Well, you'd probably read it like instead of stopping between each one of the sections, you'd stop after like maybe two yeah, I'd stop at the periods, right? So like in this part, I might briefly stop at this comma here, but then I would continue on all the way to the period. As nighttime rustles at my knee, I stand in silent gravity and quietly continue chores of feeding leaves and stealing toys. So I might pause briefly here, but then the rest of this, I would just continue on. Like nothing was stopping me, right? And I'd just keep on going like it would in a normal chapter book. But obviously poems are set up differently than how your normal text would read. So how to read line breaks. When you're reading a paragraph, pause when you reach the end of a sentence. When you're reading a poem, pause slightly when you reach the end of a line. The end of a line in a poem is called a line break. Poets choose where to put the line break. 
So if we go back into our poem, which one is this? Sorry, I'll go up here. If we go back to our poem, this is a line break from here to here. Now, as you can see, this one kind of makes sense, right? It's a comma, so you could see why there's a line break here. But the poet can break, up, break it at any point. So from here to here, they decided chores would be the break. They stop here and then break and go to of. There's no punctuation there. But again, in a poem, you don't need to have that. You can choose as the poet to break the line wherever you feel like. And remember, when we break the line, we pause slightly. It's not quite as long of a pause maybe as you would for a period or something like that, but you do have to do a slight pause, okay? So from here to here, there's a pause. And that's what we call a line break. All right, so let's go back. So white space, we're gonna look at that now. White space is a place in a poem where there are no words. So Micah said it's like a blank area. Right? There's nothing there. And he's right. And white space would look like that in a poem. Why do you think the poet would put white space in a poem? What do you think the logic is for putting white space in a poem? Marco? No, nope, you're not saving space when you create white space. You're actually taking up more space than you would need to save. So why would I put up white space, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, you would probably want a longer pause. So you put more white space, more of a dramatic feel to the poem, right? So let's go ahead and look at that. So we're gonna look at the parts here. Line breaks, you group certain words together. It tells you to pause slightly and it makes the poem sound a certain way. White space separates different parts of the poem. Tells you to pause a little longer. Like Daniel said, you're gonna pause longer, right? So it's gonna tell you to pause a little longer. Now, as Amelia said earlier, stanzas, right? Separation of parts. So usually that's where the white space is separation between stanzas. Now it's a little hard to do that in a, a PowerPoint, okay? So if we go up to the poem, it's a little harder for me to create the white space that um, some poets do in books. Some books, they put dramatic amount of white space sometimes between stanzas. I can't really do that on a PowerPoint, right? But this area right here, would be the white space, right here. So this is stanza one, stanza two, white space. Line break, white space. So for those of you that just came in, we're just reviewing some parts of poems. There's white space and there's line breaks, okay? And they affect how you read a poem. So line breaks, you pause, kind of like periods, you pause slightly, and White space, you would pause a little bit longer than you would a line break, okay? So I'll attempt to read the poem one last time just so you can kind of hear it, and then we'll go from there. I don't by no means consider myself an amazing reader of poems, but we'll give it, we'll give it a shot, okay? So as nighttime rustles at my knee, I stand in silent gravity and quietly continue chores of feeding leaves and sealing cores. While beetles whisper in my bark, while warblers roost in branch and shrub, I stretch my roots into the hill and slowly, slowly shrink myself. A thousand crickets scream my name, yet I remain the same, the same. I do not rest, I do not sleep, and all my promises I keep. To stand while, while all the seasons fly, to anchor earth, to touch the sky. So as you can see, you're doing some very brief pausing from here to here, because that's a line break, from here to here. And then you do a slightly longer pause from here to here, from here to here, because that's where the white space is at, all right? And the white space isn't always the same. Some poets like to put a lot. They'll purposely spread you further out. 
In this case, I wanted to make them a little bit smaller, but that's because I have to blow up the poem so you guys can somewhat read it and all that stuff. So it'll look different depending on the poet. Just like your writings, right? When if everyone in here were to write something, it would all look different because all of you write in a different style. All of you write using different words that you prefer to lean on. And so it would look different. All right, so that's our lesson today, is day one poetry.